in foster care. Fast, 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 about what was going on, and the judge, had, uh, uh, judge previously had told him not to do it. Judge Murphy said they was legally right to do this here, and, and she wrote me back, and I still got the paper that she sent you, and which was is 100 percent wrong. They froze my account. I yeah, uh, here's a news flash. Uh, you know, right life. now judges can, judges can commit malpractice too, right? You know that now, right? They can. Yeah, the judge just because just rule. because Judge Murphy said it, just because a judge said it, it mean, doesn't oh. mean it's lawful. Some things that judges say and do are based in conflicts of interest. They have a loyalty to an agenda to that's financially driven. To each other. Right. Not only that, when I complained over to the, uh, the uh, compliance department over there, I was standing there. I went to the wrong room, but God guided me to the room. When he guided me to the room, it was held by Bob Kate. He was the head of compliance. Oh, I was standing there. The child advocate, Valerie Jones, called him to talk to me, and they were talking about me while I was standing there just asking me to ask him for information. <laughs> and when he found out who I was, he threatened to lock me up for coming in an unsecure, a secure area. And I looked at this guy. Uh, this is what you are a phone call to a friend. And you can have your right terminated. Yeah, intimidation. Our courts, our courts are not available to us anymore as uh, uh, citizens who supposedly have state constitutional and U.S. constitutional rights to petition for redress of grievances without being a licensed bar attorney. And that's why we, when we do our filings, we say we wear our state constitution, saying that no one interviewed us and asked us if we had completed law school and joined a corporate organization called the American Bar Association before right. they sold vested interest stole and inflicted personal injury and robbed us of our career contribution. So we want to now invoke our state constitution and U.S. constitutional right to approach our courts for redress of grievances without having to become licensed bar attorneys in order to get access to our courts. I mean, you would think that a federal court order meant something. It don't mean nothing to them. It doesn't it's mean nothing. Not in a corrupt, not in a corruption poison jurisdiction. But the way you show, the way you chip away at the credibility of any jurisdiction, any court, any judge, is to show repetitive data. You don't. So you you have to make it so exactly personal. Exactly what you're doing, right there. You have to show. You have to show. We're not a bunch of dis. We're not disgruntled dissidents who just don't agree because a decision didn't go in our go our way. We are law-abiding citizens, Americans who acted lawfully every step of the way, and these individuals acted criminally in violation of existing laws, policies, and procedures. And only data is going to show that when you show it over and over again. The victim pool has certain characteristics, and the assailant pool has certain characteristics. And the assailant pool is always a wolf pack traveling with a DHS state agency, at least two state agency employees from contractors, social worker and a contractor, with at least two taxpayer pay or wealthy private attorneys posing as custody or support masters in the figure, and at least two wolf pack domestic relations judges at the state court level who have conflict of interest relationships with the DHS multi-million dollar contractors and the private social club, like our Kevin M. Dowdy administrative judge who's going to be honored by Beneficial Bank and Core Services on November 23rd, 2010, in complete offense of the 42 families who have asked that Kevin M. Dougherty and Margaret T. Murphy and Alice Beckton Bowe and Judge Robert J. Matthews be indicted for 47 felony crimes against at least 42 verified families in the, in the U.S. Eastern District of Pennsylvania, Philadelphia County. I don't think any of you know how you get to be a champion of children, which I found out. You make a donation. So if I had $10,000 made a donation, they would uh-huh. honor me as a champion of children. It's on the website, and it's unbelievable that, that this Kevin Dockery is getting honored for anything. Margaret Murphy is backing him up for the champion of children, so she made a donation to make sure he becomes the champion of children which I'm going to say on here now, November 23rd at 4 o'clock in front of the Union League where they're having it, I am going to be.
am going to be protesting. If anybody wants to join me, I will be out there protesting at 4, from 4 o'clock on. I want to say thank you to a paralegal in New Jersey who disclosed, who found the data that Margaret T. Murphy, supposedly an impartial adjudicator in our family court, is actually sits as a sits as a secretary on the board of officers for a multi-million dollar state agency contractor core services. I would just like to say that that's a that's a well, glaring well, conflict of interest that a piece can of I, data can discloses. I, can, the I, can, I add, excuse me, can, can I add one more thing though? Yes. They always say we got freedom of the press. For eight years we've been we've been going to the press with this and they wouldn't do nothing. Uh, eight yeah. years we've been going to the news media and they wouldn't do nothing. This summer, I was promised by uh, uh, the reporter uh, Regina Medina, who on her own went and found out. She said, "I, I know things they did to these kids that you don't even know." And you know what she told us? I told her right then and there. I said, "Miss Medina, I don't care what you say, or what you do." Your editors are not going to let you publish this. I said, and they did let her publish it. When I went to her and talked to her and got her to call all these families, she didn't publish anything. And like I told her, I said, if you publish what was going on this with this here, either two things are going to happen. Either you want to win a Pulitzer Prize or either they're going to pay you and you're going to get rich. And she ain't won no Pulitzer Prize. But, Brian, Deb, listen, uh, we have freedom of the press if you recognize who controls the press? All yeah. right. If you see, if you, we yeah. have a tool sitting right. We have a tool sitting right at our feet that we're not. You, we are looking with traditional expectations at mass yeah. media who who sells advertising. What they expose is based on who pays for the sponsorship of the message. All right. So now you have free and low cost internet services that allow. Citizens journalism. If you can verify it, you can report it. You can control it. You can go to your events, film your events, upload it, and massively distribute it. Okay? So as we have a tool at our feet that we need to start using. We need to be our own press. When the U.S. Marshals were sent to talk to me, the U.S. Marshals were sent by Honorable Mitchell S. Goldberg to talk to me, to tell me that Please I cannot enter your password. Or if you enter the wrong mailbox number, all right, and but, but that I had freedom of the press. They say this, nobody's going to stop you from telling the truth on YouTube. Nobody's going to stop you from publishing that because you have the constitutional right to do that. You just can't tell a federal judge where he's wrong because he's lifetime appointed and he doesn't have an agenda that's your agenda about the truth. He has an agenda about something else, okay? So we are, if we instead of complaining about what Regina Medina did, who's under the thumb of who her editors or whoever the Daily News is uh, loyalties are, what drives the Daily News and their advertising, their sponsors, what is stopping us from taking our little camcorders, filming right. it, whatever we our video statements, our press releases, our gatherings, our telephone calls back and forth to each other, and getting it out there so that people all the way on the other side. When we did our open letter in front of the family courthouse on 924 to President Obama, Tom Corbett, our gubernatorial, our governor-elect now, we exposed that when Deborah Justice asked Tom Corbett going to meet the governor next breakfast series, what are you going to do about VHS? They're in the paper all the time. What are you going to do about them destroying our children and causing injury to our children? And this governor candidate disclosed to a group of um, um, people that were listening to him, uh, was, oh, Chamber of Commerce, he said, quote, all I know about VHS is what I read in the paper. Well, we're here to tell you. We're here to tell you. We're here to tell you as a candidate now, and now as governor elect, that we, by gathering our own experiences through responsible recording, citizens' journalism, and the power of the internet, we have data that we are now a far too tragically large voter constituency who you will either recognize our platform agendas or we will galvanize, organize, and have the voter clout to either impeach you, bring you out, or put ethical judiciary in. You, what you know about DHS is going to extend now beyond what you read in the paper, and you're going to see us as the news source to tell you what is accurate about DHS. 